my selections in here, I can put keywords on, I can also just drag a selection over to one of these keyword collections, skid, that automatically puts the skid keyword on that portion of the clip. So now, if I come up and select skid, I'm now looking at those two segments of those two clips that have that skid keyword on it. It's that easy to get back to the content that you want to. So it's a really a huge improvement in the organization process in Final Cut Pro 10. So, to jump around within the timeline. First thing I'm going to do is jump down here a little bit and scroll down and zoom in just a little bit here. So, I'm going to demonstrate the magnetic timeline. So you'll see that these clips in here, the stuff that's in the primary storyline, we have these little green lines that show the clip connections to the audio. So if I pick up a clip and move it around, things move around, but the audio that's associated with that clip moves with it. The sync is maintained as I move things around. I can move stuff around earlier and later in the, in the timeline. I can also pick up a clip that has things attached to it, and the audio that's attached to it moves with it automatically and the timeline rearranges itself as I go. The magnetic timeline also allows me to do things like, for example, if I go to extend this piece of audio, normally, when I get to this point where it's gonna hit that other audio clip, I wouldn't be able to move it any further. I'd have to go move that other one out of the way and worry about what other things that was gonna affect. Here, I just move it down a little further. because you're not messing with things further down in time. Your timelines are no longer fragile. It's really amazing. And one of the things you'll notice here is there are no hard tracks in this interface. There aren't really any tracks. Tracks come and go as needed. So you can have things stacked up really deep in one section and only a few in another section, no problem. Really, really easy. Now, as Pete was talking about, audio sync is something, for each one of these clips that's in the primary storyline, it has the audio, that's, the primary audio is connected to it and appears in the same block within the primary storyline. We do a bunch of different things to line up. If you're doing secondary audio, if you have second source audio, we do a number of things to line those up for you. We can take the time code from those two items, line them up. We can even, if you're using, say, a DSLR, you can let the audio run, the mic on the camera run as scratch audio, take your secondary audio from the second source, when you bring those in, we'll go and analyze the waveforms and figure out how to line those up based on that. <laughs> and then once, the, once those have been locked together, nothing that you do at this level of the timeline can ever knock those out of sync. Now, if you do get something out of sync for some reason, this clip, we actually deliberately pushed out of sync. So if we play this back, or by this powerful machine, that's way out of sync. So that's easy to fix if that does happen for some reason. I can just double click, and now what's happened is that we've jumped down inside that clip. So I can see a separate audio and a separate video. I'm gonna roll back up here to the beginning, and if I zoom in, we can see that, we can see right here, where the uh, slate audio is, but the, it doesn't happen in the video until a little bit later. One of the other things to notice here is, as I'm zoomed in this far, you'll notice there's kind of a light band here. That represents one frame, but the playhead is actually going at a tighter resolution than that. I've got sample accurate resolution for aligning audio. <laughs> back in sync, I can just pick this up, drag it over, the viewer's actually updating, and I can just go to the spot where that lines up, I'll back out a little bit, and we'll go back down to this other section right here, in sync, so at this level I can make adjustments, but when I jump back up a level to my timeline, now they're in sync, propelled forward by this powerful and at this level, I can't actually knock things out of sync accidentally. It's just not possible. Now, another thing that we have is what we call secondary storylines. A lot of times when you're working on B-roll, you want to be able to do the same types of operations that you do Hello. in the primary storyline. So that's what we have up here. I can click and I can drag around. And I'm just going to step back to the beginning to go to one of those demo ground ones I was talking about. 
was talking about. So if I go ahead and move this around, you can see that the secondary storyline behaves exactly like the primary storyline does. I can move things around, I can win here, and I can put transitions in on my secondary storyline up here. I can even pick this up and move it around as a little group up above. So it makes it really easy to, to actually do edits in your B-roll really easily without having to cobble things into little tiny pieces together in a whole bunch of different tracks. It makes editing a lot easier. Let's jump a little bit earlier in the timeline here, and I'll zoom in. Now let's take a look at the precision editor. So we have an edit here. Yeah, I mean, this is the first time you press it. So he kind of stumbles a little bit. It'd be nice if he started right as he started to say something interesting. I can just double click on the edit here, and the precision editor opens up. What I'm looking at here is I can see, skim and see the content on the left clip before the edit, but I can also see all the content that's available to me past the edit. On the clip to the right, I can see all the clip that's in the edit and all the content that's before the edit. So I can see all of the media in the edit. A lot of times what you end up having to do is, when you want to add some frames, you have to add some extra and then take them back off again. Here you can see them before you even get there. And I can grab, I can move this around, I can grab either side of the edit to move things around. I can roll the edit by just grabbing the center. <laughs> and I'm doing everything using the mouse here because that works well for a demonstration, but everything I'm doing here can be driven from the keyboard. So for example, I just come in, type in plus 10, that edit's going to move by 10 frames. So no worries, everything can be driven from the keyboard. What I'm going to do is, to find the spot where he starts saying something interesting, I'm going to turn on audio skimming. And this is pitch-corrected audio skimming. This is the first time you press the This is the first... So right here, when he says the first, I can just skim to that. <laughs> it makes it really easy to find something. Between the waveform and the audio skimming, it's really easy. And all I have to do is click. And when I click, the edit moves to that point. I can double click on this. And now, the first time you press on the gas pedal, yeah. it's uh, right in that nice spot. Now, that's fine for the audio, but he's not looking at the camera. So he doesn't look at the camera until over here. So it would be really nice if the video, if, if we stayed on the video with his audio cut, cut, cutting in under. That's really easy to do. I can just double click on the audio. And then the audio comes down in a separate element, and then the ends of the audio and video can be adjusted independently. L cuts and J cuts are super easy. All I have to do is grab this and drag over. And now, the first time you press on the gas pedal, it's, uh, it's quite an experience, isn't it? Just like that.
thumbnails back on. And let's zoom out just a little bit here. Now, this session here where we've got a bunch of audio, we've got a bunch of cuts up here in the main storyline, we've got a bunch of audio down here, and that's all really important as I'm putting that together. But once I get that all figured out, this all becomes kind of visual noise. And so one of the things I can do with compound clips is I can select a group of clips like this, and with a single keystroke, I can collapse that together into a compound clip. That maintains all of the edits exactly as they were, but this now behaves as a single clip that I can trim, I can cut, I can do anything I want to. If I double click on it, I can jump down inside and see all of the stuff that was there and continue to edit this piece, but it lets me do it at different levels so I can control the complexity that I'm looking at in the timeline. So let me jump over a little bit further down here. We'll zoom in a little bit. And now I'm going to show retiming. We've got retiming directly in the timeline. So we've got this nice clip. It's a little slow. It'd be nice to speed that up. All we have to do is select the clip, come up to the menu, select fast, 4x. That clip is now four times as fast. But it'd be really nice if we had it going fast at the beginning and slow toward the end. No problem. I'm just going to select the second half of the clip, come back to my menu, choose normal, and now the second part of the clip is at 100% and the first part's at 400. <laughs> Really easy. But it's all live, so I can grab this and I can make this part more slower. It's telling me that it's when it's green, it's 100 percent or if it's blue, it's, it's faster. I can adjust this segment over here, back and forth. But notice as I do this, as I pull this shorter, look what's gonna happen over there on the right. Those two audio clips are gonna bump into each other, which would normally be a huge problem. No, I just got away. I don't have to worry about what's going on further down in my sequence as I'm editing. Think about that. <laughs> you can just edit in some place and everything downstream is going to stay in sync the way you intended it. It's a really amazing change in the way that, that you get to work with this application. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the next thing I want to show is color matching. So we have this clip that's a sunset shot, and the next one is the cars driving away. It'd be nice if those two matched. So all I have to do is come up here and choose uh, match color. And this brings up a two-up display, and then I just, just select the clip I want to match to. So if we want to match to the interview shot, I just click. If I want to match to the inside of the car,